so we have already seen that if we have a feedback interconnection between a linear time invariant system and a sector non-linearity, memoryless sector non-linearity, then under various uh, conditions uh, or on for various sector non-linearities, we get conditions on the LTI system such that the origin of the feedback uh, interconnection is globally exponentially stable. Okay, so if psi is in the zero infinity sector, basically first and third quadrant, if this is not reality, then what we needed is the LTI system to be strictly positive real. Similarly, if psi is in the k1 infinity sector, we needed g by 1 plus k1g to be strictly positive real. We, uh, when psi was in the 0 k2 sector, then we needed 1 plus k2g to be a, a strictly positive real. And when psi was in the k1 k2 sector, we needed 1 plus k2g by 1 plus k1g to be strictly positive. Okay, why we ensure this so that um, origin of the feedback interconnection is globally exponentially stable. Okay. So, this is just the condition that we have got. Now, if we plot the Nyquist plot of G, then how does it translate to, I mean, from the Nyquist plot or from the sketch of the Nyquist plot of G, can we uh, conclude that whether the transformation G uh, will be uh, such that depending on the sector non-linearity we can establish whether the feedback interconnection is going to have a exponentially stable origin or not. So for that we will first start with the case when the memoryless non-linearity is in the k1 k2 sector. So if psi is in the k1 k2 sector, so what region the Nyquist plot of G should be confined to? So that 1 plus k2g by 1 plus k1g turns out to be a strictly positive real transfer function, and this is under the fact that uh, k1 and k2 are. positive quantities okay now uh, with this uh, we know that the transfer function that needs to be positive real is 1 plus k2g divided by 1 plus k1g this is the transfer function that we need to be positive real. Okay, strictly positive real. This has to be SPR. Now, one way to check whether something is strictly positive real or not is if the entire right half of the S plane
the gs or uh, i'll try right over explain maps under the action of g to the first and fourth quadrant of the gs plane okay i'll say g tilde because we are using g tilde this is one way another way to so spr is nyquist plot of g tilde is confined to the first and the fourth quadrant of the g tilde s plane okay excluding the imaginary axis plus g tilde s has all its poles in the open left half plane of the s plane please note that uh, we will be confining our discussion to gs which is a ciso system okay so there are two ways we'll use the second way to show whether g tilde is going to be strictly positive real or not given certain characteristics of g okay now So the two parts, as I said, like this plot of g tilde s in first and fourth quadrant, and the other part is g tilde s as all its poles on OLHP. Okay. We'll first see about the Nyquist plot of digital dyes, and then we'll see about the stability of digital dyes. Now, as you already know, digital dyes is nothing but one plus k two g divided by one plus k1 g which also can be expressed as k2 by k1 multiplied by g plus 1 by k2 divided by g plus 1 by k1 so since we need the nyquist plot of g tilde to be in the first and the fourth quadrant then essentially what it means that the g tilde uh, should have a phase that lies between minus 90 degrees to plus 90 degrees of course the boundary points excluded also from the expression of g tilde we know that this is going to be angle because of k2 minus angle because of k1 plus angle because of the transformation g plus 1 by k2 minus angle because of the transformation g plus 1 by k1 now k2 and k1 being positive quantities their angles are going to be zero and i can express the remaining transformation as g minus of minus 1 by k2 subtracted g minus of minus 1 by k1 this is what 
I can express. Now, before we uh, look into the condition that will arise, let us see what this g minus of minus 1 by k2 essentially means. So, if you consider the gs plane and suppose this particular point lies on the transfer function in the plot g plus 1 by k2. Okay, it lies on the Nyquist plot of g plus uh, 1 by k2. Then, or rather, um, I should say it like this. Suppose, uh, my mistake, suppose this point lies on the Nyquist plot of g, this cross. And let's say that minus 1 by k2 is somewhere here. Then the point because of g minus of minus 1 by k2 is essentially given by the vector that starts at minus 1 by k2 and ends at or has the head at the point G of S. A different color so that it is visible properly. Okay, so this is your G minus of minus 1 by K2. Similarly, if you have minus 1 by K1 here, then the vector from minus 1 by k1 till the point g is going to be g minus minus 1 by k1. Okay. So, the angle made by the vector g minus minus 1 by k2, which is this, let us call this as alpha. This is same as the angle of g plus 1 by k2 at the point s. Similarly, the angle made by the vector g minus minus 1 by k1, let us call it beta, that is essentially the angle made by the transfer function g plus 1 by k2 at the point s. Okay. So, if you want to find the angle g tilde, then g tilde is nothing but equal to alpha minus beta. But if you notice in the figure, we have a triangle formed by the point minus 1 by k1, minus 1 by k2 and uh, this g of s for a particular s. Okay. So, alpha being the exterior angle of the triangle and beta being the interior angle of the triangle as shown, what alpha minus beta denotes is essentially this angle. This angle is alpha minus beta. Please remember, remember that we now have a triangle where alpha is an angle opposite to beta lying in the exterior of the triangle or on the extended base of the triangle and alpha minus beta is therefore the angle that is uh, subtended by the two vectors at the point gs and that is what is the angle or the phase of g tilde because of the point s okay this is what we have now since we have a triangle let us also have a circle so considering the same plane 
uh, is the real and the imaginary of G. Let's say this is minus 1 by K2 and this is minus 1 by K1. And uh, let's say that there is a circle. This circle is essentially centered at minus 1 by k1 my, uh, minus 1 by k2 divided by 2 comma 0 so basically on the real axis with radius of 1 by k1 minus 1 by k2 okay so essentially this is a circle where the minus 1 by k1 and minus 1 by k2 points serve as the endpoints of the diameter so consider this circle now if you take any point okay so let's say that you take a point here on the circumference of the circle and then you draw a triangle by joining the chord lines like this then what is the angle that you get here from geometry this will be a right angled triangle so that angle is going to be 90 degrees okay if this point lies inside the circle then the angles magnitude will be anything between 90 degrees to 180 degrees okay so what we have is point on the circles circum on the circles circumference angle subtended by diameter is 90 degrees point we are only talking of the upper half okay the lower half will have negative angle so the point inside the circle then in that case the angle subtended by that diameter is going to be within the value of 90 degrees to 180 degrees similarly if the point is outside the circle then the angle subtended by diameter is going to be somewhere between 0 degrees to 90 degrees this is what we are talking of only the upper half so if you come to the lower half then the angles would be considered as uh, between minus 90 to 0 or uh, minus 180 to minus 90 and so on okay now this is what we have so if you notice the angle because angle of g tilde has been represented as the angle that is subtended by the two uh, angle between two sides at the point gs at the corner gs and now we also are talking of a circle where if we take a point that point can very well represent the point gs and uh, if the point is on the circle then we have an angle of 90 degrees if it is inside the circle then it is between 90 to 180 and if it is outside the circle then it is 0 to 90 degrees or minus 90 to 90 if we consider both sides we need the angle of g tilde to be in the range of minus 90 to plus 90 so from geometry of circle and a triangle if we take both of them then this suggests that
for g tilde or for angle of g tilde to be in the range of minus 90 degrees to plus 90 degrees the nyquist plot of gs must not lie inside or on the circle which is centered at minus 1 by k1 minus 1 by k2 divided by 2 comma 0 with a radius of 1 by k1 minus 1 by k1 by 2 okay there is a correction here this will be by 2 so for g tilde to lie in the first and the fourth quadrant in the g tilde as plane the Nyquist plot of GS must not lie inside. So, no, no part of the Nyquist plot of GS. Okay. I should say parts of the Nyquist plot. Not, we are not talking of the entire plot. Okay. No part of the Nyquist plot should lie, must not lie inside or on the circle which is centered at this particular point on the real axis and has a radius of min 1 by k1 minus 1 by k2 by 2. If we ensure this then g tilde is definitely going to be on the uh, first and in the first and the fourth quadrant without being uh, having any point on the imaginary axis. This is one. Okay. So this is one part to the uh, problem that g tilde is going to be strictly positive here. The next part is to ensure that g tilde has all its poles on the open left half plane. So for that, let us go back uh, to how the Nyquist stability criteria actually came up. So what we have is g tilde to be equal to 1 plus k2g divided by 1 plus k1g. So this means that the poles of g tilde are same as the zeros of the transfer function 1 plus k1g. Okay, so and what we are interested in is or okay, so the poles of G tilde in the right half plane is going to be same as the zeros of 1 plus K1G in the right half plane and we know that with the suitable choice of a Nyquist path the net encirclement of the minus k1 point in the counterclockwise direction okay is equal to the difference between number of poles of 1 plus k1g in the open right half minus the number of poles or, or sorry number of zeros of 1 plus k1g in the open right half okay so this n is net counterclockwise encirclement 
of the point minus 1 by k1 by the Nyquist plot of G. P is the number of poles of G in the right half plane. Z is the number of zeros of G in the right half plane. Right half of S plane. Okay. This is what we know. Now, if G tilde has to be stable or has to have all its pole in OLHP for then you don't you need that all the zeros of G must be in the ORHP. Okay. For G tilde to be stable, all zeros of 1 plus k1 g must be on the open left half of the s plane this means z must be equal to 0 so Nyquist plot of G must encircle the minus 1 by k1 point P times in the counter clockwise direction okay so this gives you everything about the stability of g tilde so for g tilde to be stable the nyquist plot of g must encircle the minus 1 by k1 point p number of times in the counter clockwise direction where p is the number of poles of g in the right half plane okay that is how many times the encirclement should happen now if you combine the two statements because we finally need g tilde to be spr so we said g tilde will be spr if g tilde is confined to the first and fourth quadrant strictly to the first and fourth quadrant and uh, g tilde is stable so for confinement to the first and fourth quadrant we have got a condition that says it should not enter a particular circle defined by the points minus 1 by k1 and minus 1 by k2 and for g tilde to be stable we need the nyquist plot of g to uh, meet a certain encirclement criteria so the encirclement criteria says it should encircle the minus 1 by k1 point p times in the counterclockwise direction and the uh, angle condition says that the Nyquist plot of g must not enter the circle or even touch the circle or lie on the circle so that uh, g tilde lies in the first and the fourth quarter. So to ensure that both of them holds this can finally be put as following so the conditions if we combine them uh, just give me a minute Okay, so if we combine the uh, 
conditions so that we finally ensure SPR. We can state it as the following. G tilde is strictly positive real if the Nyquist plot of G does not enter or touch the shade circle so the circle that i have mentioned here and encircles the same circle in the counterclockwise direction p times okay where p is as i have defined is the number of right half poles of g okay uh, i'll correct this i'll say right half okay not open right half. i had written orhp there encircles this p times so this condition so G does not enter or touch the circle and also because it has to encircle the minus k1 point without touching the circle. The best way that it can do is actually encircle the entire circle without touching the points minus 1 by k1. Uh, without touching the circle itself and while encircling the point minus 1 by k1. So G tilde is SPR. If the Nyquist plot of G does not enter or touch the state circle and encircles the same circle in the counterclockwise direction p times okay this criteria or this result that you see is known as the circle criterion so if you have if you know your gay uh, sector defined by k1 and k2 and let's say that you have the nyquist plot of g already with you what you just have to do is mark the points minus 1 by k1 and minus 1 by k2 and draw a circle with those two points as the diameter and see whether the circle intersects the nyquist plot or not if the circle intersects the nyquist plot then g tilde will not be strictly positive here if the circle does not intersect the Nyquist plot, then check for the encirclement. If the encirclement criteria is met and the circle is not intersected, then what you essentially have is G tilde will be SPR. So we are concluding whether G tilde is going to be SPR based on the Nyquist plot of G and a circle which has a diameter with endpoints minus 1 by K1. This is what is the circle criterion. Please note that in this entire discussion, we have considered G to be a single input, single output system with uh, the uh, sectors defined by K1 and K2 slopes, where K1 and K2 are positive slopes. Okay, so uh, in the next lecture, we'll see how uh, this uh, circle criterion gets. Uh, modified uh, i mean the circle criterion remains the same so this circle changes as there are changes in k1 and k2 so this is what you can actually observe if the value of k1 changes or the value of k2 changes the circle will also change okay so we'll see how we can extend this idea this particular idea that we have got for other different uh, sectors like the k1 infinity sector or the 0 k2 sector and so on okay and uh, there is one more thing that i'd like to uh, introduce here before we end this lecture is the region inside this circle since it is uh, not allowed to enter the circle okay so the circle 
along with the region inside the circle circle along with the region inside the circle we will label it as the uh, uh, sorry we we'll label this circle along the region inside the circle as the forbidden zone because the uh, nyquist plot is not allowed to enter the region so we we'll label this as the forbidden zone this nomenclature will simplify the discussion that we'll have further for different sector non-linearities. So we'll stop here. Thank you.